everybody. Welcome to a free webinar on Wyckoff tape reading. And we're going to focus on the Weiss wave as we're going to talk about tonight and then a little bit on the current markets. And so just as a quick disclaimer, um, this is, I'm not advocating, you know, any investment or trade. You want to check in with your financial advisor before making any trading decisions. So what we'll cover today is um, some of the Wyckoff principles and trade setups that are pinpointed, if you will, with the Weiss wave and how that occurs. Uh, we'll take a look at the cable. That's the uh, US, that's the British, great, uh, great British pound to the US dollar Forex cross rate. Say that three times fast. So we'll look. To, we'll take a look at the cable, and we'll take a look at S and P's. Those are, and, and also crude oil. There was a nice little trade set up a few days ago. All those are on the intraday charts, and then we'll take a look also at Nvidia, um, and we'll do that on a daily basis, and showing you that these principles and the Weiss wave all work on all different kinds of actively traded markets across all different time frames. That's the hallmark of a good trading tool or a good trading strategy is that it works on multiple markets as long as they're actively traded, various time frames. So we'll go through those. And then I wanna take a, just a few brief moments, probably less than three minutes or so, just to talk about, let you know about a new training that we're doing exclusively on the Weiss wave. Uh, no one's ever really done a full-blown uh, training on the Weiss wave, including David. He did one training for for us, my, for the folks who worked with me uh, several years ago, but that was it. So, and then he died, unfortunately, prematurely. So we'll we'll be doing that shortly, and I want to talk a little bit about that. And then we'll talk. Then we'll take a look at the current S and P's and what to anticipate next. And we're gonna look at the higher time frames. Usually, you you know, when you think about me, I'm a five minute day, day trader, so to speak. But you know, the monthly, weekly, and daily charts are all really important to get a sense of where we are even intraday. And we'll talk about that and I'll show you some point and figure projections as well and how these all combine with traditional charts. Um, anybody else having difficulties with sound? One person said they're having problems with sound. Thanks. I'm going to send this to him and encourage him to re-log in. All right. So let's get going here. Let's take a look at the Wyckoff principles and how we pinpoint trade setups with the Weiss wave. So here's cable. This is the British pound to the, four, uh, to the US dollar Forex cross rate. And on this chart, this is a five minute chart. And on this chart, I've got the price bars, obviously. Also have the Weiss wave superimposed over the top of the price bars. And underneath is wave volume. So for example, starting here, we can see that the we've got a wave down and that's this associated volume on that wave. Then a wave up, the associated volume on that wave and then a wave down in the associated volume there. Also, you can see at the turns, the wave volume is plotted, and this is in hundreds, so this would be 2,400 contracts, 1,900 contracts, 400 contracts, and, 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 and so on. Uh, volume in Forex, is that true? You bet it's true. This is actually tick volume, <clears throat> and if you were a co commodities trader back in the day, you would know that regular volume was unavailable for a, a lot of the commodities markets. And so what traders did is they used tick volume. Tick volume is, uh, the actual definition is the number of price changes that occur within a given uh, time period or within a given parameter. So that's pretty close to volume. It's not exact, but it's awfully close. And uh, as I say, commodity traders have been using this method for decades and decades. It's very familiar to us. Uh, not so much though to the Forex folks. They say, oh, volume, how do you get volume? Well, 
so tick volume is available on most all uh, trading platforms. And back in, I forget exactly when, several years ago now, in one of the old trading magazines that's now defunct, there was a very, very good study by a Forex uh, firm where they were actually, they were able to get actual bank data for a period of time. And so they looked at tick volume and actual volume that they could get and tracked it. And they, cable was one of the markets. And I think the yen, uh, the yen to the dollar, and maybe, uh, I forget what else, the franc to the, to the uh, euro currency or something. I, 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 it doesn't really matter what the markets were. Um, but what they found was that the correlation coefficients and the R squared on that was in the upper 90s, meaning that it's basically the same thing. Tick volume and actual volume are equivalent. And if you're interested in that study, uh, I've got a copy of the article. You can send me an email through the website and I'll send you a copy of that uh, article. But very well done, very, very well done. Uh, and just shows that these are basically equivalent things. So we use tick volume. And we can see that in the markets coming down. And by the way, if you've got questions, ask them as we're going through the chart. Keep them relevant to what we're talking about, please. Don't go um, wandering off into some other topic. Um, but ask the questions as we're discussing them because it's hard to go back uh, later on. So we can see in the European session here that the market was coming down pretty hard. A lot of volume in here. And so what that says is that supply is in the market. Supply is present in the market. There's a background condition of supply in the cable market. And that doesn't just go away. Nevertheless, we get a nice little rally up here and we can see the way volume pick up some strength, some fuel behind, uh, behind that volume. And that nice rally kind of peters out in here and we hold gains. There were a couple of trades in here. I didn't show those on this chart, but on this bar here, or even on this bar right here, any of those would have been okay. And you can see that the volume just, especially right at the end here, where on that last push down, it, the volume just tails right off. There's no supply at that point in the market. And so that encourages the market to rally, and it does. We have a swift little rally up, a quick rally up to D here, and then that creates a trading range. Now, I'm gonna show you some real subtleties here. Note the rally up to E, huge upside volume. In fact, the biggest we see on the chart, huge volume. But what does it tell us? It actually tells us that that's not demand, that that's supply. Yeah, there's some demand in there pushing the market up. Has to be to push, you know, to rise, raise price. Right? But all that volume, and we don't make a new high. Lots of effort to go up. We call this effort versus result. This is a principle in Wyckoff. Lots of effort to go up. No good result on that. And we see it crystal clear. If we know what we're looking for, we can see it with crystal clear lenses on the Weiss wave. So supply in the market in the background, now supply coming in here. Also, tape readers would see this push down to F, even though it doesn't draw out a lot of volume, it shows that supply is still present from the, in the market, that, that in fact, sellers came in and dropped it really quick down there. Buyers did come back in, and so we see on the subsequent rally up to G, um, we break the um, earlier, earlier swing high here. And we come down, it looks like we're testing it, but then on the very next push up to H, and you can see the number five there, just 500 pairs or 500 contracts, excuse me, on that, on that rally. So, so an aggressive trader, Knowing, knowing how to use the Weiss wave might see that and might take a position there. To me, I like confirmation and that came down on the, on the next push down. We come back underneath the hot, back into the trading range and then we get this little tiny little rally up at I right, on very minuscule wave volume showing you there's a good opportunity to go short 
and that's the play right there. Uh, this is known as, this is a classic play in Wyckoff, the upthrust and the test of the upthrust. This is the test, this is the upthrust. And the target, the minimum target is down here at the bottom, actually to take this out, and I don't know if it did, but uh, the minimum target is down here to the bottom and it eventually gets down there. We come down and you can see the supply comes right back in and uh, took a little bit more time to get down there, but uh, it did. So classic trade setup made pretty easy, I think, in trading it via the Weiss, Weiss wave, highlighting supply in the background, supply in the trading range at E and F, and then no demand really on the attempt to rally up uh, and break out of this trading range, which fails, <clears throat> gets final, uh, final confirmation in a test here and a great sp spot to go short. Yep, no demand. That's right. That's right, Diego. Diego saying no effort versus result, and Abdullah is saying no demand. Absolutely right. You guys understand Wyckoff there. Does Wyckoff wave repaint the bars? No, it doesn't. Although sometimes I use different painted bars. Let's turn to the S and P's now. And uh, this was Friday, the big day up on Friday. <clears throat> let's see how the Weiss wave might have helped us out here. Oh, so, um, let's see. What do I want to say about this before? Oh, a couple of things here. So on this chart, I do have the bars painted red and green. It's kind of useful when you're tape reading to have the bars painted that way. You'll notice I have both the standard volume here and the Weiss wave. And as you go along, notice that it's difficult. It's readable. Yes, we can read the volume. But this is the typical uh, volume smile, right? We get heavy volume in the morning, early part of the morning. It kind of goes dull into the noon hour and then picks up towards the end of the day. And it's a nice little smile. But no notice it's kind of hard to read that. There's some peaks in here and some of the dips and stuff. Some of the dips are useful, as we'll talk about. But when we look at the Weiss wave that's on the lowest subgraph here, uh, highlighting the volume in the waves, it's mu it becomes much clearer, much, much clearer. So let's see what, uh, what that clarity gives us. <clears throat> so price comes straight down uh, to yesterday's high. I'm always looking at yesterday's high and low, and it's unable to go lower. We have what we know as shortening of the thrust in the, in the price bars, and we have heavy volume. Again, similar to what we saw earlier in the cable on that rally up to E, a lot of effort here to push down and we're not going anywhere. So an aggressive play could be made here, right at yesterday's high. We should get a little, you know, it's a key support level. So we ought to get a, uh, um, a rally off of it anyway. But this just kind of confirms that this heavy volume here and not going down says somebody's in there buying. So, and notice where we get to. This is kind of interesting right here. This isn't really a Weiss wave thing. This is more tape reading <clears throat> where we rally up to exactly where the heavy supply comes in. So the sellers are basically defending that. And if you knew that, you'd want to at least take a piece of your trade off, if not the whole thing off here. And this was a nice little, nice little trade. And the rest of the rest of the morning session here, the next you know 45 minutes or so, really hard to nothing really to do in here, except that we note that as this rallies up, we can we can understand that this was an area of accumulation where larger players are accumulating contracts. They're always trading in large size, and they can't. Uh, buying on rally bars because they push this price against them. They're looking to acquire an inventory of thousands of contracts in there. They're trading for big firms, right? Big capital and, and lots of information and stuff. So they're the ones who are in there making this accumulation area occur. Uh, and not necessarily something that we can see at the time or even that we can trade at the time, but once it breaks out like this and, and it does so on good volume, we, we can assume that that indeed was accumulation <clears throat> and that there will be uh, follow through on this rally up 
as long as whatever pullback we get doesn't bring out supply. And we see that as we pull back, we have narrow, narrow ranges, we come back to the old support here, old resistance becomes support, it comes, comes back into that area. And then we didn't draw out lots of supply compared to what we had earlier. And also, this is where the standard volume can be useful. We can see that um, last little red bar here <clears throat> just brings out no supply whatsoever. And so as the market starts to rally up, you can buy it in here. We push up again, demand comes in on the Weiss wave. Uh, it's it's uh, stronger than, than uh, the uh, than supply. It pushes up above. This was the multi-day trading range high at 48, 41 and a half. That went back a week or so. And we pushed up above that and then we pull back and again on the Weiss wave, no volume there, just no downside supply volume. Same thing here on standard volume and that was an ideal spot to go long. And we rally up, uh, we, this was kind of tricky in here because we're, we just persisted through although we were getting overbought in the trend channels and, and essentially that is just telling us that this is very bullish, very strong market to, to do that. Um, and we're doing that through a part of a part of the noon hour as well, which is also a little bit unusual. So we have unusual volume on the Weiss wave in where we don't normally expect that. Also, that abnormality is a is a flag signaling us that something unusual is going on and that something unusual was a bullish move out. Now we come up into this area here and notice the Weiss wave volume starts tailing off and we get a little bit more downside volume in here, but you can, you know, somewhere in here is a good exit for your trade if you hadn't gotten out down over in here. So that was the S&Ps on Friday. Probably difficult to trade in here, but it, everything became pretty clear in these two areas and we had at least two really nice trade setups occurring off of off of the Weiss wave and just standard, typical technical analysis. When we break resistance and it comes back to that area, it should be support and we confirm it with the Weiss wave and price action and volume. So let's see. <clears throat> yeah, uh, somebody said momentum here. Weiss wave does highlight momentum, although not in terms of price action really, but in terms of the wave, in terms of longer waves and, and, and shorter waves. I'll show you that here, <clears throat> excuse me, on this on this market. So here's crude oil. Uh, this was the week, bef not this past week, but earlier than that, January 10th. Uh, and by the way, I'm giving you the Weiss wave reversal uh, levels here on this, so you can you can uh, see those. They're a little bit different for each market. Um, so we're in an uptrend all the way up to A, and this is a five-minute chart of crude. And the market gets overbought up in here, overbought in this trend channel, and then creates trading range. Now the keys here, I circled. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I circled the. Uh, the volume here. Notice this volume is larger than anything we've seen coming coming up. And this 93, this is in, what is this in? This is in thousands of contracts. So this is 93,000 contracts, 48,000 and 93,000. We didn't see that coming up here. So supply has entered the market. Right? Supplies come into the market. And on the rally up, um, we can see that up here, at, we have 53,000 contracts, not quite the same level as we had uh, on A at 93. We drop down and then try to rally. This is the this is the up thrust and then the test of the up thrust. Very similar to what we saw on it, whereas cable, we were seeing it was kind of hidden in the in the effort to go up and and not great result. So great spot to short here. Then the market drops. Volume swells on the Weiss wave, doesn't get climactic in here. So in that sense, we are seeing momentum in the market. This would be kind of a way of measuring momentum if you're interested in that. Um, though there may be better indicators to do that, I don't know. Um, and then we go into a, um, 
kind of a protracted, uh, or not protracted, but uh, yeah, about an hour's worth of sideways movement. And it, and it tails off again in an upthrust here, followed by a low volume test of that upthrust and another leg down and another strong volume coming down. And then that was basically it for that day. So again, classic trade setup, um, and you can see how effective this tool is and how it can really help you to read the market very clearly. Transition, poor flow, says Bill, study of responses, change of behavior, supply over demand, demand over supply. Great to see how easy it is with the Weiss wave. Yeah, and I'm not going to go into all those details because that, that would take us for, Bill is a, is a skilled Wyckoff trader and um, has been working with me and the other folks in our group for a number of years, I think now by this point. And you can, you hear him say all of those basic Wyckoff principles, supply over demand, changes of behavior and so on and so forth. And those are the things that are um, the terminology that we use. I'm kind of giving you an overview here of that um, and not trying to, for the folks who don't quite un know Wyckoff very well, I don't want to bog us, get you bogged down in jargon and worried about that. Just kind of see this as a, in a you know, kind of soften your eyes and just see if, see this and say, man, could this help me in my trading if I if I were to pay attention to stuff like this. So um, here's the NVIDIA, the hot stock of the month, right? the hot stock of the year with the, all the AI, talk of AI and, and all of that. NVIDIA has been one of the market leaders in, in uh, the last several months. Um, in fact, one of my hedge fund clients was kicking themselves for not having bought, they were a trader in NVIDIA uh, up until the last, I don't know, a couple of years ago. They actively traded it for, for several years and then didn't do anything with it for a couple of years. And then they're kicking themselves recently for not having continued to trade it. How, you know, how would you know, right? Anyway, so like any good technical trading tool, this should work well uh, in all active, as I said in, at the beginning here, the, all actively traded markets and across all the various time frames. Now we've looked at the index futures, the S and P's, right? We've looked at a commodity, crude oil. We looked at forex with the with the cable, and now it's a stock. And we were looking at the intraday markets, and now this is a daily chart. And we can use the Weiss wave on the daily. This is a quarter point reversal. David often used a 10 cent reversal, um, but for this stock, I thought a quarter point was a better uh, a better uh, reversal. So springs are another classic Wyckoff trade setup. They're basically the opposite of upthrusts, where on a spring, the market goes underneath support, an established support, and then comes back up above it to rally over the top. And we see that very nicely. We put, some, we put the lows in here, um, and the, here, and then here, the swing low, and then the spring low, occurs down here. It's a little, it comes in, it doesn't come right, come in right away. It comes in a couple of times to get down here, but uh, we can see that the volume here, 51, 18, 50, this is 518 million shares. This is in, this is in hundreds of thousands, I guess, or millions. And then uh, what is that? 1.2 million. So it's not, it's about half the amount as over here. Right? So when this rallies back up and closes up here, there's your there's your there's your entry off of that spring. You get a good firm close, low volume and and compared to the earlier and we're just not in the same. And so we rally up, we get volume expanding on B, we get a higher high here, another indication of bullishness. We go into a bit of a protracted rate pullback through the month of uh, September, and we kind of muck around. But now, then, towards the end of the year, we start to, or the beginning of this year, excuse me, we start to hold a higher high. And again, we get a little spring here, and the volume here is less than the volume before. And we just wait for it to close up and notice this gap opening 
here, that's just indicating supply, the imbalance of supply and demand. That's your entry right there. So your second spring occurs in, in this kind of larger trading range, and then we're off to the races. And this is how we closed on Friday in NVIDIA. Some questions coming in. Is this Weiss Wave on a trade station platform? Yeah, this is this is this is on TradeStation, one of the two, two platforms I use, the other being multi-charts. So let's see, Eric says, close of current bar with respect to high-low range of prior two or three bars is a great way to identify consolidation, breakout, or breakdown. Key part of my trading toolkit. Close of current bar with respect to the high-low range of prior two or three bars. Yeah, we, you know, we're in terms of tape reading, we don't try to do things like that so much. Um, we're looking more at the individual bars and the volume that's been produced and also on the wave volume. One of the things that you'll see in, in the waves is that, you know, the, the um, here we have, you know, strong down waves coming. And then here they get a little bit smaller. Now the up wave gets larger, and now we get kind of choppy small waves coming in again, and small waves here and large waves here. It's just another indication of how the market can be read in terms of waves rather than just in terms of maybe individual price bars. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do you decide on the setting for the daily waves? Well, through experience, um, the uh, we've been I've been using this tool since 2006 when David first showed it to me. Um, he did a lot of work on the settings, and you know, frankly, it's we know the, the sweet spots of those of those settings, um, but uh, came through trial and error. And, uh, and, you know, David would say, for example, he would use a 10 cent uh, reversal here. And I always felt that that's, for this stock, I felt that that was too small, too quick, too, we'd get too much, too many reversals in there. It, was, it makes it harder to read. David loved that. He liked to see all the details. Me, not so much. I like to see the more broader picture. Um, and so in crude oil, for example, he would like a 0.03, a three cent wave, and I prefer a five cent wave. So, you know, there's a little bit of wiggle room, so to speak, around the sweet spot, but uh, the, the uh, Weiss wave is, would be purchased either through us or through Karen, uh, David's widow. And uh, there's a listing of the major markets and uh, the reversals um, the reversal in the, uh, numbers that um, are those sweet spots, and then you can tailor them to your own trading from there. Eric says, I worked for, with David for many years, and I could never, I could never, I could clearly explain how you calculate the amount of reversal on the Weiss wave. I kind of felt like David thought he was guarding the, the secret like formula of Coke. Will this course help m make that calculation? Uh, I don't know why that's such a problem. It's it's very simple. The Weiss wave changes. You can set it to different to different things. But for example, here we're using a quarter point. So let's just say a quarter point reversal. And this is based on the close, which we found. David found to be the better use of the Weiss wave rather than try to the highs and the lows, to reverse at the highs and lows. Though the Weiss wave is set up so that you can reverse off of the highs and lows if you want. But he preferred the close and my preference is the close as well. So when the market comes up, let's say to here, and it registers a, a value, and let's just call this, I don't know, it looks like it's, let's call it 490, just, just to pick a number, right? If it drops by a quarter point down to 489 and goes through it, goes through three quarters, so let's say, yeah, let's say three quarters, then the wave flips. That's it. That's it. There's nothing more to it than that. 
uh, in terms of the, the uh, Weiss wave flipping. Now, the bar has to close, so if it's still operating, it can, can push back up, and then the Weiss wave doesn't flip to the, to, to the downside. But as long, once that bar closes, as long as it's more than three quarters of a point, the Weiss wave has flipped. And until, until that wave flips again and goes up by, th by a, qu a quarter point, then it's going to continue to keep going down. That's, the, that's it. It's very simple. I don't know, maybe David, I don't know why he would have felt like he needed to protect that. It's in his book, um, and he's always described it that way, and that's the way I know it. Now, in terms of the coding for it, that's a different story. It's a, it's, it's a fairly sophisticated coding that goes on using swings and correlating the and, and pairing the volume with the swings and stuff. Um, and it has to be done in two, two separate indicators, one for the wave itself and the other for the volume. But, uh, and he did protect that, which was understandable because he wanted to, wanted to protect that, his, his intellectual work. Uh, but in general, it's a fairly straightforward thing. But Eric, if you've got, you got questions on that, send me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, see what I can do to help you out. Uh, Weiss wave looks similar to the zigzag. Yeah, it's based off of the zigzag indicator. Probably, yeah, that's true. Let me just go through a little bit here. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Just to give you a highlight on the on the Weiss wave webinar that I'm going to be doing in a couple of weeks. I um, just want to talk briefly on it. It's, it's a new training opportunity. So I'm going to be doing a, a webinar exclusively on my understanding of the Weiss wave. And as I said, I've been using this tool since David first showed it to me in 2006, and I went through a lot of the iterations with him on, on the various ways that, that he, uh, he, he configured it. And so this is a tool, certainly for experienced traders, but also for those who are still developing an understanding of Wyckoff principles and the method. In fact, as, as I tried to kind of highlight here, one of the really clear advantages to use in the Weiss wave is that it makes seeing the principles, the Wyckoff principles, easy and straightforward, clear cut, once you've learned how to use it. And so that's what I'll be teaching in this webinar, how to use the Weiss wave as a central tool to understand demand and supply, and how the changes, in that, because that's what this thing measures, and how the changes in demand and supply show up on the charts. And we can quite easily see Solid uh, trending conditions, and also when the market's about to change direction. So it's an invaluable tool. And just like David used to do, I'll teach you everything that I know about it. Nothing is held back, nothing, no secrets or anything like that. Okay, so it will, it'll take place in a couple of weeks on the 7th, and we'll do it, I think that's a Tuesday, it's a Wednesday, I think, and we'll do that right after the close at 4.30 Eastern time. And of course, we'll record it so you'll have, you can review it multiple, as much as you want. And if you can't make it, it'll be there for you. It'll be available for you. And like we always do, we'll offer a good discount for those registering for the webinar. And it'll be priced higher after that occurs. So we'll also include a couple of other things. One, one is that David did do a webinar for us the folks in trade mindfully uh, several years ago and the quality isn't great but the content is terrific and so this is the only webinar that i know david did on this true webinar specifically on his tool here the the weiss wave so that'll be included and i'll also include a week's worth of uh, smp intraday trading um, after the webinar. So you can see how it can be applied in the current markets as they unfold. So you'll get an email each night and I, I'll either do it, uh, you know, in a paper format or I might do a short video. I haven't decided yet, but I'll review the day and the key points you want to be aware of in using the Weiss wave. So there'll be some of that. And I think there's also, uh, so, so we'll do those things. There's also a video tutorial on tape reading as well, some basic tape reading. So lots of useful stuff. That's as much as I want to do on promoting and marketing and all that other nonsense that I don't really care too much about, but I want to get to the current markets here. 
So let's see here, the S&Ps. Now, I'm gonna start with the monthly chart and we'll look at the weekly and the daily. And, you know, as a five minute day trader, my goodness, how come you're looking? I look at the yearly and the quarterly charts as well. I'm not gonna put those up today, but it's really important to be a, have a good sense of what's going on in the market overall, even as a day trader. You wanna know what the, what the uh, overall trend of the market is. And so starting with the monthly, we've been up. This is the October flush here, the, the after we broke out of the resistance and came back down um, in October, we've been rallying in November and December. So we're bullish overall on the monthly and it looks quite strong, um, but we're getting high. You can see in the trend channel, this, these green lines here, and this will be more apparent on the weekly and then the daily when we, when we get to it. Um, so something to be aware of. We're getting we're getting close to to technical resistance here, and we may see some sort of a reaction at some point up in this area. But let's we'll look at this more carefully as we get to the weekly and, and daily. So let's take take a look at take a look at the weekly. Now this weekly chart is a very interesting chart. It shows all the market action since the highs of um, late 2021, early 2022, um, and then all of the area in here, I'll show you that in a minute, of that bearish move into the end of 2022 and the uh, springtime of 2023. Let's take a look at that. I highlighted this here in, uh, in green, the accumulation area. And in our membership during, during during when it, when it started to become obvious that this was likely accumulation we started tracking this and we went on for weeks and weeks and weeks we tracked all of the you know the the, uh, the wave the down wave shortening and the volume expansions and the um, absorption area and all of that and that was all in this area so we've got a very large accumulation area and we had the subsequent breakout and then the back up in here kind of a a shake out at the very end of that back out, the back up, and then now we're rallying. But again, we're getting kind of high in the trend trend channel in here. Something to be aware of as we get there. Now, this accumulation area is this significant? Well, yeah, it is, um, because we can take a point and figure chart, a point and figure count off of um, that accumulation area. So now let's see if I can kind of clarify this here for us. The accumulation area actually probably starts all the way back here and goes, this is the absorption. I would consider all of this area in here accumulation. And let's go back up to the weekly. Well, didn't quite make, didn't quite comport, did it? But we can, the same area is roughly from here and this is, the, this is the absorption all the way over to here. So that's the area of accumulation that we're interested in. And we can that gets highlighted on a point and figure chart. Now this point and figure chart is a 50 point uh, by one box reversal. I'm not gonna go into the details of how to, how to calculate it and how to do all that. That's a, you know, that's a whole course in itself. Um, but these are very, this is an intermediate level uh, point and figure chart. We could go, we can make higher, use larger point and figures for maybe more for, you know, something like more for, more for position type trading and that sort of thing. But this is very useful for keeping ahead of the immediate market. And this is also based on the cash index because it's a pain in the neck to try to get the commodities because the, the contracts expire every uh, three months or so. Uh, and it's, it's a pain to, to, get those, to knit those together in a usable form. So we just use the cash index and it works perfectly well. So even though this accumulation area is huge in here, we are gonna be, we are conservative. And so we took a first count right in here because there was a nice accumulation structure that built here. And that brought us up to 43.50. We, we count the number of boxes and then add it to the lows in the, in the, in this case, I think I added it just to the low. And that got exceeded. And so what, once a count gets exceeded, we can now go to the next 
portion of the count, and that would be to bring it over to here. And now we have, in doing so, we have a count that runs up to basically where we are now at 4850, all the way up to 5100. Now, on that flush down in October, an interesting thing occurred. We get a confirming count. And this is something we always look for is a confirmation. We call them stepping stone confirming counts. And they tend to confirm the count in the, the, the initial count, the larger count that we have here. And this projection goes up to 50, 50, basically in the middle of this area here. So um, that's the projection. Somewhere is up around 5,000. Doesn't, the, you know, these are, don't, don't get wedded to the number 5,100 or 5050. It's the area that we're talking about. It could could go to 40 or it could go to 5,000. It's, it's this general area. But when we start thinking about, let's take a look at the daily chart here now. When we start thinking about this count and where we are, um, and you know that, that count puts us up around 5,000 right here, give or take. Right? And when we assess the uh, current markets, we're pushing through. Now, assuming we don't get an upthrust here, right? in, in other words, assuming we don't get the market coming back down and then test it, and then, 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 then we'd be coming back down probably into the bottom of the trading range, maybe a little bit lower. But assuming that doesn't happen, and I'm not anticipating that, but it always could, we have to be aware of what, you know, what might happen to the market as well as what we'd like to see happen. But it, you know, a pull, I would I would expect a pullback over the course of the next few days, maybe, and uh, I want to see lighter volume, narrow spreads, all of that sort of thing. As long as we get that, then there's good odds that this market will push higher. Now, note the heavy green bar. This is the weekly and the monthly supply line right here, right up in the 5,000 area. So that's our target. We're projected from the point and figure, and it makes logical sense given the longer term trend line uh, market structure that we have. And so if we get up to 5,000, which is the target right now in this area, we're going to assess price and volume carefully to see if that's it for the rally or if we need to go back to the point and figure chart here and make a larger count. And we would probably start by doing something like, uh, probably something like this and over to here. And we could even go all the way over like so. So, you know, these counts would take us well above 6,000. Now, I'm not saying that we're gonna do that, I'm not suggesting that we're gonna we're gonna exceed any of this. We these are point Bob Evans used to say that point and figure targets are spots where we stop, we look, and we listen. We use the old railroad crossing analogy because it's a danger point. If we, you know, are thinking it's gonna go higher and we don't get out, or we think it's gonna turn and it's not gonna, we have to pay attention to the tape when we get there. And that will tell us whether we need to make another count or not. But for now, it seems like it's fairly clear sailing, assuming again, we don't upthrust this area, fairly clear sailing up to around about 5,000. So um, let's see, is the Weiss wave available on TradingView? Yeah, so look, David, neither David nor I were in the business of creating indicators and selling them to traders. All of this is is what he did, what he found as a useful tool. I, as his student, found as a useful tool, and we're just making. And this is what we use day in and day out. We use it on TradeStation. I think it's available on Ninja, and uh, maybe uh, I forget what else. What others? What other? At a stock, maybe I forget exactly what ones that it, it's available on. But it's only a small handful, and it's you know mainly mainly it's trade trade station and ninja trader if I if I recall correctly, and I I've never used ninja, 
um, or any uh, or any of the other stuff that you. I've always used TradeStation and um, and and also use multi charts. So Brendan, Brendan, how are you? Good to see you. IceWave uh, is an invaluable tool for determining potential change in trend. I've been using it for many years. Yep, yeah, it's it's terrific. It's terrific stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so if you're interested in this, then we'll be posting on our website. Um, you can pull that up quickly. Uh, our website, this is the free webinar. So it'll be it'll be up in here somewhere on the uh, the, the new Weiss Wave webinar. You'll see a button. We just haven't put it up yet. And we'll, we'll let everybody know both when this uh, webinar has been processed and is ready to be viewed and also when we open for registration. So that's what I've got for you today. I hope this was useful. Uh, it was fun talking with you about the markets and about my favorite trading tool here, the Weiss Wave. Uh, and again, I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in, uh, in the webinar. Any last questions or comments here? I can hang around a bit and, and talk to you all if you like on any anything that we covered. And if not, that's fine too. We'll call it a day. Everyone have a great rest of the weekend and a terrific trading week next week. Hang on a second, here we go. Some comments are coming in. Any advice on lever gang in psychology? I'm not sure what that means. Can you tell me, can you, can you, what is that? What are you asking? I'm not sure. Leveraging. Any advice on leveraging psychology? That's okay. Vlad. Vlad. Um, that's a big topic, you know, uh, leveraging psychology. You, the way we trade with the Wyckoff method is to understand supply and demand in the market as it's occurring, as it's happening in 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 during the day or during the during the week. And to be able to and to be able to act when we see negative, you know, let's say we're long a, a market and we start to see negativity come into the market in price bar action or and or the Weiss wave. Um, and there are various forms that that would take play that 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 could have. We want to exit at that point, and so your psychology has to be where your mind and your ego. You want to kind of check your ego at the door, kind of thing. You know, check your biases at the door. Check your ego. Check. You know, I'm going to make uh, five thousand dollars today come hell or high water sort of thing. Uh, you know, the, all of that stuff is meaningless when it comes to reading the tape. We're tape readers. That's what we really, that's what Wyckoff was. And we're not indicator followers. We're not, you know, making stuff up. We're tape readers, meaning that we act on the tape and the psychology has got to be clear. Your head's got to be clear to be able to do that. And the best thing that I know is to start practicing meditation and mindfulness. Uh, you begin to see that your mind is a really wild place. It's a really wild environment. And that through meditation and through pra the practice of mindfulness, both inside and outside of trading, will allow you to see the market more clearly, and see when danger <clears throat> starts to arise and will allow you to act appropriately rather than trying to hang on to a trade for a home run or alternatively cut a, win a good trade that's winning, cutting it short because you're afraid of what might happen. So that sort of stuff, that's how to leverage psychology in all of this. Uh, let's see, will you be posting a replay? Yes, we'll do a replay of this. Uh, it'll be coming up in a fairly soon. Is Weiss Wave harder to interpret on time frames less than five minutes? Well, I, you know, I'm not a scalper. Uh, David would use, he, as I said, he loved the weeds and he went down to a 20, 
200 and I think a 250 tick chart, something like that, or maybe 500 ticks, some, somewhere around there, probably less than a minute. Um, so yeah, it'll work on that. And he was he was playing around with devising things on that. He had some he had a a, a, a spring that he was concept that he was using with that. Um, but that's very to me that's a very small time frame, and I don't go down less than five minutes. So. Um, yes, it can be used there, uh, if you like. New to Wyckoff says, Joseph, where should I start learning Wyckoff and candle and volume reading? Well, we don't use candlesticks. That's one thing to, to know. Um, and I would suggest there's a couple of sources. The original Wyckoff course is excellent. David wrote a book called Trades About to Happen. His application of Wyckoff in the, his modern application of Wyckoff. That's an excellent book. He also, David also wrote a couple of chapters in a book called Starting the Market, The Wyckoff Method. He wrote two chapters on bonds, another excellent source. And then some of Tom Williams's work over across the pond in the UK. Um, he wrote a book called The Undiscovered Secrets of the Stock Market, or The Undeclared Secrets of the Stock Market, excuse me. The Undeclared Secrets of the Stock Market, another excellent book on Wyckoff. All of those are very useful in tape reading. Point and figure charts, it just struck me looking at your long-term time frame chart that time frame density on the y-axis is very important. Uh, any comment on this? Not really. I, no, it's the, the, what the point and figure charts do is they um, highlight very well the horizontal support and resistance areas. And from those areas, we can um, assume that accumulation or distribution had taken place and make counts from them. So if that's what you mean by density, that's, that's yes, it's similar. You're just using a couple of different terms for it. Phyllis says, how to choose the right setting for Weisswave um, trading view? Yeah, I don't know trading view. I don't have a clue as to how that works. I think that's probably somebody else's Weisswave. Uh, Weisswave for crude oil, are we assuming 0.03 instead of 0.05? Ken, I would encourage you to uh, check that out yourself and see what, which one you're more comfortable with. Look, there's a lot of inform, you know, there's a lot of trading information out. This is just a sort of a general comment. There's lots of good trading information out there, and you can trade the market in so many different ways. There's no one right way to trade. I happen to like this way. It's the easiest for me. I went through Fibonacci and um, Elliott Wave and all kinds of different indicators, including rocket science kind of indicators with, you know, signal to noise processing and no lag timing indicator and all that kind of nonsense, all that kind of, which I call nonsense now. It's not really nonsense, but I found it to be very difficult to do because sometimes the signals would be terrific and produce good trades. And then the same bloody signals would be off, God awful and wipe out all the wins that I had. So um, to, to, for me, what I came to the conclusion of is that to, to, to be able to read the tape is what's really important. And that's really what Wyckoff did. He was a tape reader. Some folks who teach Wyckoff like to think about trading ranges and how to phase them and what this means. And, you know, and basically they're trying to take a, con a conceptual idea and force it onto the market. And that's not the way Wyckoff traded. Wyckoff was a tape reader, period. That's all he did. And so all the rest of the stuff is kind of, you know, hanging jewelry on the charts, hanging, you know, it's like a Christmas tree and, and ladening it with ornaments, ornamentation. You don't need all of that stuff. At least I did. I don't need all of that. So uh, when you are using a technical tool like the Weiss Wave, you want to make it your own. So you might find that 10 cent uh, uh, changes, reversals are, are best for your particular trading. This is the hallmark of a, of a professional. They take what's available, they work with it for a bit, understand it inside and out, and then they make it their own, assuming it's useful for them. 
And that's what I would encourage you to do. We give some guidance, we tell you where we think the sweet spots are based on some of our experience, but that may or may not work for you. You may find it a little bit different. So have an open mind and do some experimentation and figure out what works best for you. Tape reading will continue to work in the new world of AI trading system. Do I think it'll work? Sure. <laughs> yeah, because the market isn't made up of computers trading. It's made up of people. People are, you know, have psychology, they have emotions, they have cognitive deficits, they have you know, they've got, you know, ability to think clearly, but also the ability to think irrationally and act irrationally. And yeah, AI may pick that all up and all of that sort of thing. But, uh, and, you know, it, it sounds good to me. Boy, all I need to do is spend X dollars and buy the latest AI package and run that. But I'll almost guarantee you that you're going to find that to be difficult to trade because it's hard to trade systems. On, that you don't understand and you don't know and you're going to over you're going to second guess it and so on and so forth. So at this stage in the history of the world and the history of the planet I think good old everyday hard work learning how to tape read doing the studies training yourself that's the best thing to do. But I understand people like the easy route and they think AI is going to be the plats meow and so on and so forth and change the world. And it will. Um, but that's my that's my take on it. And yours may be different. Please say a few words about topics that off topic, though seldom mentioned, risk management per trade and how that fits into the probability of success. Well, that's a big topic too, Yuri, but the, you know, you want to look, I'll give you the shorthand version of it. Don't trade more than one and a half. Don't risk more than, especially a day trader, one and a half to 2% of your account. So if you're trading with a $10,000 account to keep it simple, don't risk more than $200 per trade, period. And don't be trading with, you know, a gazillion contracts off of a $10,000 $10, account. Go to the micro uh, e-mini, which I think is yeah, it's either a tenth or a fifth the size. I think it's a tenth of the size. Trade small until you get skilled at it and, and grow your account. And you want to grow your account and actually earn uh, position size. So, the you know, if you can work for a few weeks and, and build your account up um, and get it, you know, get it to the next level of margin, then you can add a contract. And, and that's how I would do money management in a nutshell. It's a bigger topic than that, but that's what I would, that's what I would suggest to you. Swing traders might have a little bit different, you know, you might be risking a little bit more, but again, I wouldn't be risking a heck of a lot. You want to keep those risks down to the de minimis that you can, the minimum that you can. And we found that one and a half to two percent of account size is, is pretty good. You can have a, a number of losses and still still um, keep your account intact. Everybody, that'll be it for us this weekend. Have a great rest of the weekend, a really good trading week, and I'll see you in the Weiss Way of webinar in a couple of weeks. Thank you all for your attention and your patience, and good trading to everybody. Take care now. Bye-bye.